Not gonna lie, I'm a tiny bit unhinged on Twitter. Don't know what it is about this platform that makes me so angry, but I hate it, and oh boy do I get rage baited. Anyway, my argumentative nature on Twitter has led me to accepting a debate. I'm gonna be debating this guy on July 21st about nuclear power, specifically on whether we need nuclear power. Though that's not exactly the topic that I wanted. I am gonna preface this right now. I do have to travel for work intermittently, and I don't always know when that's gonna happen. Anyway, I'm gonna be making a video series on my debate prep, what I learned, and who knows, maybe at the end of it, I'll just concede the debate. I don't really care, I just want to decarbonize the planet. But I think it's important that we have the context on how I even got to this point and why I'm going to be doing this debate. So get ready for my unhinged Twitter ramblings. A couple months ago, I tweeted out that conservatives in Alberta will do anything but install cheap renewable power. To which this guy responded that we don't find cheap renewables in Alberta. This is objectively false. We have some of the best wind in the world and solar isn't amazing, but it's still economic here. And together they provide the cheapest power in the province. Anyway, I thought he was kind of joking, but then he brought up transmission and storage, not realizing that makes the case even better. He seemingly didn't know what a copper plate was either. I think I deleted the tweet or just can't find it, but I did call him a nuclear shill. So we're not off to a great start. My bad. Then he makes a weird northern community argument. I'll say it a million times. Renewable energy systems are a transition period, so obviously you're going to focus on like the biggest bang for your buck first. Then I add some prices to the context of the discussion. And then he talks about like marginal dollars. Uh, and to be fair, he wouldn't know that I've already done all this math and the Lazard study doesn't actually include transmission. Then he starts to mention discount rates. And this is a tactic used by nuclear activists. In fact, they're usually terrified of discount rates because it shows how money now is, is worth more than money later. And since renewables are built faster and cheaper, they kind of blow the economics out of the water against nuclear. But that point is kind of moot because the Lazard study uses the same investment return ratio, so IRR of 12%. He makes a really weird argument, almost arguing for higher energy costs because you pay individuals more. This is a fallacy since low energy costs enable more jobs to be built down the line than if you just focused on the energy production having high operating costs. It's really weird. The higher energy costs would just lead to less job growth and an overall worse economy. And this is going to be by a pretty dramatic margin. Things start to spice up a little bit at this point because he starts straw manning the points that I make where I'm just trying to show that even if we get to 99%, that's pretty great. Then he essentially just calls me stupid and still not understanding what a copper plate actually is. For reference, this guy literally has a podcast about sound science, but seems to have no idea of the merits of renewables. This is what his about page actually says. We are the official channel of the Eco Modern Society of North America. Our goal is to build a broadly based coalition in the defense of sound science and the first science based environmentalist activist organization in North America. We reject the assertion that technology is the enemy and believe that scientific breakthroughs are imperative. We believe that ultimately the only long term solution to resource scarcity is through a tapping of endless abundance of outer space. If we are truly serious about dealing with our growing climate emergency, then nothing should be left off the table, including the use of nuclear power, genetic modification, and even geoengineering. It is only through the new eco-mentalism 2.0 that we represent can there be any hope of putting the cause of environmentalism back on track and in sync with the rightful human aspiration for a better life. So after reading all that, he seems to have no idea on the merits of renewables, which is really weird if your whole goal is to like project this type of information and, and how we need to progress as a society. You should at least have the bare minimum understanding of renewables. But anyway, I stick to my super mid decision that the market will decide what technology is best. And he provides me with this study that he thinks dunks on my perspective. The chart that he's showing is actually really important. Basically, if you don't have firm low carbon energy, which in this study is either nuclear, natural gas with carbon capture, or hydroelectric, then the costs of low carbon emissions get exceedingly high. This is something that I also show in the videos that I have having renewables only being in the 80 to maybe 90% range, where the last 10 to 15% is usually taken up by these low firm carbon systems either existing nuclear, existing hydroelectric, or more hydroelectric because it's cost competitive with nuclear. So I retort with the same study that I've shown many times on this channel, which shows lower costs than the ones that he's shown. But it is important to note that at this point, I was kind of in debate mode. I was on my phone and I misread part of the study that he provided. So if we look at the abstract, they say, we investigate the role of low firm carbon resources in decarbonizing power generation in combination with variable renewable sources battery energy storage, flexible demand, and long distance transmission. We evaluate nearly a thousand cases covering varying CO2 limits technological uncertainty, and geographic differences in demand and renewable resource potential. Availability of firm low carbon technology, including nuclear, natural gas, and carbon capture and sequestration, and bioenergy reduces electricity costs by 10 to 42% across fully decarbonized cases, below 50 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. These resources lower costs in the vast majority of cases. Additionally, as emission limits decrease, installed capacity of several resources changes non-monotonically. This underscores the need to evaluate near-term policy and investment decisions based on the contributions of long 
long-term decarbonization rather than interim goals. Installed capacity for all resources is also strongly affected by uncertain technology parameters. This emphasizes the importance of a broad research portfolio and flexible policy support that expands rather than constrains future options. The issue here is that they do include hydro, they just don't actually say it. It ends up being a comparison by just solar, wind, batteries, and transmission versus solar, wind, batteries, transmission, and hydro, and nuclear, and all of these other technologies, which I already agree with. Again, it annoys the shit out of me that we don't include hydro when we're talking about renewable energy systems. But then when we go to the point of the study that I presented, it's about figuring out the best way to decarbonize at the lowest cost. And this is really important context because when you don't bundle nuclear with hydro, hydro wins out every time against nuclear. Then after this, he thinks that I'm lying for some weird reason. Again, for someone who runs a podcast on these topics, you'd think that he'd know renewable systems have come down in cost significantly over the last few decades. So I give him more evidence. He also seems to think that I'm scared of higher carbon taxes. But we can see that solar and wind have come down in costs from this study in 2018 and are already pretty close to their low end estimates. Batteries are also on their way to the low end too. But nuclear? Well, $4,200 per kilowatt seems like a fucking pipe dream. Try $8,000 per kilowatt or more. Again, I make the hydro mistake, but rightfully point out that it ignores nuclear for the sole reason of costs. If your firm low carbon includes nuclear and hydro, your hydro is going to be doing most of the heavy lifting. He again thinks that I'm lying or that I think that I'm smarter than the people who made this study. I was mainly arguing that the study doesn't provide the things that he thinks they are and that it's not fairly making the case for a fully renewable system without nuclear, overestimating the value of nuclear by bundling it with cheaper alternatives. This is a classification issue. I don't fault the study at all. It shows exactly what you'd expect it to show. But when you get into more detailed analyses like the study that I provided, you see that nuclear falls out of the bottom. But at this point, I know he doesn't like me and I sure as hell don't like him as he keeps trying to belittle me. But I'm also asking for it, so not really going to blame him for that one. Then we're kind of just dicks to each other. But at the end of it, I admit where I went wrong. I admit that I didn't read that part. Again, I was more looking at the renewable side and went, why doesn't the renewable side have hydro? And that was my main gripe with the study. But then we get into the important context. Now that I understand both studies, you can take them both into account and they actually work together. They build off of each other and they actually work against his points. Again, all his study shows is that hydro and other technology is necessary with VREs. What mine shows is which ones are necessary. When you combine those types of ideas together, nuclear just gets left behind. He thinks that I can't answer the high voltage cable question that literally hinges my entire belief on renewables next to extremely low cost battery systems. Then I'm a bit of a snide little asshole, but I was pretty annoyed at this point. He proceeds to not look at the appendices, and then once I point that out, he stops responding. Now I should have walked away at this point, wiped my hands, but apparently he lives a little bit rent free in my head. And when I'm in a fighting mood, I jump onto Twitter, so fuck me. Fast forward two months, and then Twitter sends me this delicious, delicious rage bait. This guy's arguing with somebody else, so I start chirping him. Not a great look, but here we are. You can read the conversation. There's not a whole lot of substance. He's being pompous. I'm being a dickhead. I still think it's weird that he thinks that he came out smelling like roses when he's the one who stopped responding, but whatever, fuck me, it's stupid online drama. This leads me to wanting this topic on which energy sources we should focus on, but he retorts with new nuclear versus no nuclear as the topic. To be fair, it's a lot catchier, but I don't think that I fully agree with the prompt. Nevertheless, I'll take it honestly because I agreed to the debate. So let's start with my current stance and my current bias. If you're familiar with my channel at all, you'll know that I have a pretty neutral take on nuclear power. I think it's a good source of energy and that we definitely should not shut down plants prematurely. It's one of the safest energy sources on the planet, along with being low carbon. I personally have written papers praising nuclear, worked with a nuclear power company for my fourth year chemical engineering capstone, and I'm currently working with a nuclear power company for a paper that I'm writing. But my broad views on nuclear changed around a year or two ago when I was researching these types of topics for my papers that I write. At that time, my renewable energy understanding was pretty surface level, and I made a lot of really shitty arguments. The same arguments that I see constantly from the nuclear power advocates on subreddits and generally online. So much that I believed renewables such as solar and wind should be minimized in favor of nuclear. But when I took an open-minded approach to the data available, I changed my position. I was wrong, and I presented most of that data here on this channel. This is what my stance is now. Nuclear power, for the most part, is unnecessary. When you factor in the cost of transmission, battery storage, and VREs, they still outperform nuclear per dollar spent. The cost trajectory of solar, wind, and batteries have been impressive, to say the least. 
and I believe that the social hesitancy is too high for nuclear power, increasing its investor risk. But for the sake of this discussion and my debate, I'm going to assume that's not even a factor. So even if we give nuclear power the benefit of the doubt, we're still looking at costs between $5,000 to $9,000 per kilowatt. In no world is that ever going to be competitive with renewables, even when factoring in all of this ancillary equipment that's required. I do think that nuclear power has a place, but realistically that place is less than 5%. So really, whether it's adopted or not, will probably be inconsequential with the rapid technological development of VREs and renewable energy systems as a whole. If we're going to give the benefit of the doubt to nuclear, we should also give it to batteries. If batteries get down to the $20 per kilowatt hour range, it basically kills the transmission argument too. I have much more faith that we're going to have $20 per kilowatt batteries than we're going to have really low cost nuclear power plants. The investment risk of nuclear is really high, and I just don't think that it's worth it. But who knows, maybe this research will change my mind again. I think it's really important when you're going into these types of the discussions, though, to ask yourself, what would it take to change your mind? So barring the social nightmare that is nuclear, the main things that would change my mind are as follows. If nuclear unsubsidized costs can be competitive with VREs, so likely in the area of $1,500 to $2,500 per kilowatt, if the building and development of nuclear facilities can be competitive with the deployment of renewable systems, so about less than five years, if nuclear power systems can operate as more than just base load and meet variability in demand, and if nuclear can be cost competitive with hydropower plus transmission. These are broad areas that I'm going to be researching for this debate, though like I stated, his primary reference is a gotcha for nuclear power wasn't great, so I'm not really sure what other information he's going to provide. He stipulated that we provide each other our references by June 21st for the debate on July 21st. I would have been happy with an off-the-cuff debate, but I guess we're going to go down the more academic route. If you have any suggestions for research, let me know down below, and if you you'd like to be my sparring partner and take the other side, let me know as well. I can bring you on stream or we can have a private discussion, whatever you're more comfortable with. And I'll be making a series of videos around this topic for what I learn.